Peter, welcome. Talk to me if you would about the state of the private credit market right now. Well, it certainly has been growing and has huge prospects for ongoing growth, but it's actually on pause. And it's on pause because with interest rates rising and staying up, although fluctuating, the cost of capital is higher. So private equity firms have kind of stopped disposing companies, which has decreased the level of financing. So on a net basis, actually, there isn't much private credit being added or broadly syndicated bank loans for that matter, but it's temporary. What role do you see banks playing or can they play in this market? Well, banks are key. Uh, Banks always have been. Um, They have the services. They have the ideas. The investment banks in the leveraged credit world, and of course, private credit is a big space. We're talking about non-investment grade corporate credit here. Um, And banks, whether it's M&A ideas that that causes growth in private equity, taking companies public, all kinds of mergers and acquisitions, and also just basic routine banking services. But uh, banks are not good holders of capital. And of course, the whole regulatory role in the growth of private credit, we can come back to that. Um, So they're really inefficient providers of capital but not of, in fact, they're the leaders in terms of all the ideas and value-added services they provide. So where are the opportunities for business? Well, for us, um, we're both a fiduciary on behalf of investors, deploying capital, and a lender. So it's a terrific combination. We, in fact, um, have a unique exclusive collaboration with Barclays Bank PLC. Um, So a lot of people say, Barclays, that's a global British bank. Yes, it is. Um, But also, few remember that in the GFC, Barclays, which didn't need any government help, uh, acquired Lehman's people and building and actually have arguably the largest private equity sponsor franchise. So huge origination footprint. I'll just go on to say that uh, we do have this exclusive long-term collaboration with them. So we're connected to the largest origination footprint, arguably, in the U.S., We're also upstream, meaning that we're involved in all kinds of opportunities at the very beginning, long before our financing's figured out and decided upon. And last but not least, we're fully integrated into the bank and how they do all of this, uh, which for us, AGL, that provides an incredible information advantage both as a lender and as an asset manager. More broadly speaking, what's exciting you most about this space at the moment? Um, It keeps evolving. So uh, I've been in credit, believe it or not, for at least I find it amazing for 48 years at this point. Um, So it's like a movie sequel has the same four actors. There's borrowers who need capital. Um, There's the capital that they get. There's the banks as the main intermediaries and there's regulators. And in this current chapter, which is ongoing, it's actually quite structural. The regulators keep uh, putting more pressure on banks in terms of how they can hold capital. And so space continues to evolve. Uh, private credit grew after the GFC as banks pulled back from smaller uh, leverage borrowers. Um, and asset managers who deployed into private credit were so successful raising money that they've moved upstream into larger transactions. And you asked about AGL and Barclays. Our focus with them is on the convergent zone between broadly syndicated bank loans and private credit. These are larger enterprise value borrowers. Um, that, that's where we have all the change and why it's in the news all the time with more and more bank collaborations, of which I would say that the, the Barclays and the AGL one is, uh, is the most original. The one that had the most planning built into it is now fully built and in operation. Peter, thank you so much.